Global Game Jam, one of the most exciting game dev events of the year, is right around the corner. So let's take a quick look at some helpful Unity features and resources that can help you get up and running quickly during the jam. In case you missed it, Global Game Jam is the world's largest game creation event. It brings together creators of all backgrounds and experience levels to create games based on an annual theme in just 48 hours. Unity staff often participate or help out jammers during the event each year. And since this year's jam will be all virtual, we wanted to make this video and share our recommended Unity resources for brand new jammers and experienced game makers alike. In addition to this refresher, don't miss Unity's full guide for Global Game Jam Online by visiting globalgamejam2021.unity.com. Before we dive in, here's a quick overview of what we'll cover. We'll show you how to quickly learn the basics of Unity using Unity Learn, how to find game art, audio, and more with the Unity Asset Store, tools to streamline the creation of 3D and 2D worlds, ways your team can add logic and interactions to your game, helpful tools for making special effects, features for handling cameras, cinematics, and cutscenes, and ways to find help and community with other Unity creators. Let's dive in. No matter your experience level, it's important to save precious jam time while you're learning how to use the editor and its features. Unity Learn can help with this. It's a free resource with hundreds of Unity tutorials and courses that cover every facet of game development, and many of them come with projects that you can use to follow along. Just visit learn.unity.com to explore or search for tutorials in your areas of interest. Some of our favorites to recommend as prep for Global Game Jam include our Creator Kit series, the recently updated Rollerball tutorial, and the Unity microgame projects. The microgames in particular are excellent if you're trying Unity for the first time. They come with interactive guides that show you what exactly to click, view, and edit as you mod an existing game template. If you have time before the jam, we recommend completing any of these tutorials as a great way to warm up and get a head start for the event. Jammers are encouraged to use their talents to create anything their game needs, but in cases where that's not possible, the Unity Asset Store can be a great help for filling gaps in your project. It's an ever-growing library of game assets you can use to find art, audio, scripts, animations, templates, and many more resources your game might need. Keep in mind the jam only allows the use of free assets only, and be sure any assets you use comply with the rules listed in the jam's content policy. Now let's take a look at the best Unity features for quickly creating 3D environments, the first of which is ProBuilder, an in-editor 3D modeling and level design tool. You can use its mesh creation and editing features to make your own 3D objects, or even edit geometry created outside of Unity by using the ProBuilderize feature. It also comes with other useful tools, like the ability to apply vertex colors or unwrap and modify object UVs. Use these tools for making quick placeholders or changes to your game objects so your team can save time when creating or searching for art assets. ProBuilder is also excellent for creating level or environment layouts. Its shape tools let you quickly add and customize a dozen procedural shapes, like prisms, doors, pipes, and stairways. You can also draw your own custom meshes using its poly shape tool. If you need to create softer, more organic looking objects, you can also use another Unity feature called Polybrush to sculpt, smooth, and paint the ProBuilder objects you've created. To use ProBuilder and Polybrush in your Unity project, go to Window Package Manager to install their respective packages and find links to each tool's documentation, which contain guides and details on how to use these features. If you find your game needs a natural, realistic environment, be sure to also check out Unity's Terrain Tools package. This feature allows you to create landscapes by using intuitive brush tools for sculpting elevation, painting textures, adding details, and much more. To use it, download the Terrain Tools package from the Package Manager and add a terrain object in your scene. You'll find all its editing tools within the Terrain component in the Inspector. As a final note for 3D Worlds, if you're making a virtual reality or augmented reality game, Know that Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit can provide you with common AR and VR interactions so you don't have to code them all from scratch. These include game object interactions like grabbing or throwing, 
AR object placement, UI interactions, and VR locomotion. You can grab the toolkit and its documentation over on the package manager. Let's switch over to another dimension and talk about helpful features for 2D games. Instead of spending time assembling complex sprites in your scenes or animating your 2D characters by hand, save precious jam hours by using the 2D PSD importer and the 2D animation packages. With them, you can import layered sprite artwork using the PSB, as in Photoshop Big, file format and use the sprite editor to easily add and assign bones to your imported sprite. You can then use the animation window to create animations with your new sprite rig or apply inverse kinematics to it using the 2D IK package. Another useful 2D tool is the 2D tile map editor, which you'll want to use if you're creating a grid based 2D game. This easy to use feature lets you store your square, hexagonal, or isometric game art tiles into a palette that you can use to quickly paint and design your level or environments. You can download all these tools and find their respective documentation via the Unity Package Manager. Whether you're working on a 2D or 3D game, you'll of course be adding game logic and interactions to your project. Traditionally, this has been achieved in Unity using c -sharp scripts, but now there's another option available that can be used by programmers and non-programmers alike. Unity Visual Scripting, also known as Bolt, lets you create logic for your game by using drag and drop nodes instead of handwriting code. This helps make scripting more accessible to non-programmers and enables them to iterate on their ideas quickly and independently. You can use Unity Visual Scripting on its own or linked with C-sharp scripts, and programmers can extend it to create custom tools for their team. To use this feature, download and import Bolt Visual Scripting from the Unity Asset Store. If you like working with node-based tools instead of code, you might enjoy two of Unity's artist features, Shader Graph and Visual Effect Graph. They help you quickly and easily create shaders and special effects for your games. Shader Graph replaces all that time you'd spend on complex shader code with high-level nodes that show your changes in real time as you edit and connect them. Visual Effect Graph uses a similar real-time node system for creating both simple and complex visual effects with GPU simulated particles. Use the package manager to add either feature to your project or view its documentation. Note that both require your game to use either the universal or high definition render pipelines, which you can find templates for in the Unity Hub. Many global game jam games make use of cinematics or camera work and yours can too by using Unity's Timeline and Cinemachine features. A bit similar to a film editing tool, Timeline is a feature used to create sequences for cutscenes, gameplay events, cinematics, and more. Using the Timeline window, you can add multiple tracks to handle and choreograph game objects, animations, audio, and other elements in your scene. It's often used with Cinemachine, a set of tools for dynamic, codeless cameras that can be fine-tuned to follow specific camera settings or behaviors. You can set your Cinemachine cameras to follow or orbit specific game objects, mimic effects like screen shake, and much, much more. It's often used separate from Timeline as well for in-game camera work like in a first-person shooter game or a 2D side-scroller. As with the other features we've shown, you can download and learn more about Timeline and Cinemachine via the Unity Package Manager. With that, this wraps up our recap of helpful Unity features to keep in mind for Global Game Jam Online. But what if this left you with even more questions or you find yourself needing help during the event? You're not alone and in fact are surrounded by a lovely supportive community of fellow Unity creators. Come join us over in the official Unity Discord server and the Unity forums whenever you need help, or even just to say hello. We can't wait to celebrate the amazing games you'll make during Global Game Jam, so be sure to send them our way via Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram using the hashtags MayWithUnity and GGJOnline. Whether this is your first or 13th Global Game Jam, we hope you have a fantastic week of making games and making new friends. Good luck and happy jamming!